Should you go watch Jesus Revolution this weekend? Well, that's a question for you to answer, honestly. But let me tell you, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about this movie overall. I'm a very strict critic when it comes to Christian media, especially because I think that, well, Christian media can be bad sometimes. And oftentimes we give it way too much credit just for being a Christian movie overall. I don't want to let these things slide past. If it's a bad movie, it's a bad movie, and we're going to talk about that here. But we went and saw it last night at the early release on the 22nd, and honestly, there's a lot of opinions that I have, and a lot of really good things that this movie actually does. Me and Vanessa were both excited to see what this movie had, and while there were some points when maybe we were a little bit questionable, overall, this movie is actually really, really good, and we both rated it pretty highly. Here's our first thoughts about the movie, and then we'll come back here and we'll dive deep into what I actually thought about this whole movie overall. All right, so we just finished Jesus Revolution in the theaters. We're gonna give our thoughts real fast, and then I'll give you a more deep dive sort of uh, look into the, what the movie was like and what we thought about it. Yeah, I think overall the movie was actually really good. I think the cinematography was great. Akis did an amazing job as he always does. Uh, even Petros was involved in this one, uh, which I didn't know before I watched, looked at the credits. And then obviously we see Jonathan Rumi in this one and we also see Paris Patel, which had a, a really cool cameo as well um, in, in the middle of the movie. But so I don't know. I think there's a lot of really cool moments. It was, it was obviously great having Greg Laurie being a person that could speak into this movie because the two main characters of the movie are dead now, you know? And so he knew both of them. Um, I don't think he knew Lonnie like crazy well. And I think the movie probably portrays Lonnie as closer to Greg than he actually was in real life. Um, but, um, overall it's a, it was a really cool, cool movie that really did a great job of storytelling not only for the jesus revolution but also greg Laurie's kind of romantic life and and him meeting his wife and all that kind of stuff um was it was all tied together very very well i think they did a great job of tying in the faith aspects with the romance aspects with the church building aspects to um, me it was super impactful because i feel like that's how i feel like with gen z right like they're the hippies of nowadays um and I feel like we need to pour into that generation. We need to encourage them and, and bring them in and, and speak their language, but not like conform. Overall, I would rate it an eight. I thought all of it was done really, really well. I'd probably give it, uh, yeah, an eight or a nine as well. So as you can see, Vanessa and I both rated this movie pretty highly. And if you're looking for a movie to go see this weekend, we definitely would recommend you go see Jesus Revolution. The other option is like cocaine bear or something like that. <laughs> so you don't have very many options if you're looking to go to the movies this weekend. But if you are interested in supporting this project and really helping more Christian productions like this, I would suggest that you go check out Jesus Revolution. It is a really good movie overall. And I think they did an amazing job with the cinematography and with the storytelling. And the writing is definitely better than most Christian productions that we see today. Although The Chosen does edge it out in that category for sure. If you haven't heard anything about this movie, it's actually starred by Kelsey Grammer, Jonathan Rumi and Joel Courtney. Now, of course, Jonathan Rumi being one of the most prominent actors in the Christian space right now as he plays Jesus in The Chosen. And Kelsey Grammer is very famous for playing Frasier. And then Joel Courtney is a newer actor, but he's obviously very well versed. He's actually really, really good in this movie as well. Kelsey Grammer plays Chuck Smith, who is the founder of Calvary Chapel, obviously one of the biggest denominations in the world today. Then Jonathan Rumi plays Lonnie Frisbee, who is an evangelist who helped Chuck during that early time, especially to get younger people involved in the ministry. And then we see as Joel Courtney plays Greg Laurie, who is obviously a massive pastor nowadays and has one of the largest churches in California right now. Overall, the story is about the Jesus Revolution from the 70s, also known as the Jesus Movement. This is a major time when there was a great awakening in America for people to come back to Christ, and especially young people, especially the hippie generation from the 60s. So many of the more senior generations of America actually attribute their faith to this movement back in the 70s. This was a big deal, and it spread far beyond where it started in California and went all across the nation, affecting everybody from Florida to Washington, everywhere. So this was a big, big deal, so much so that the Time Magazine actually wrote a large article about it, which is a part of this movie as well, as a journalist kind of follows them around. Altogether, we see the love story of Greg and Kathy, but we also see the beginning of the Jesus Revolution from Chuck and Lonnie. These four characters really drive home the story of this movie, and it's really cool to see the evolution of these characters 
church throughout. Because Greg doesn't start out as someone who even wants to seek out Christianity, but in the end, he becomes a leader of the movement. Then on the other hand, we see as Lonnie is almost this North Star for Chuck for the beginning of the film, as he's bringing him into seeing how this new generation could love Jesus. But then as the film goes on, we see more and more hints of the dark side of Lonnie, and that makes for a really interesting film. Someone who you thought was the beacon, someone who you thought was the guiding light, ends up being something else. And so we see that complexity of humanity, which I think is something that is very needed in Christian films. We can't just have this clean Christian presence. We need to see the humanity of it all as well. Otherwise, we're not seeing a true identity of who we are as Christians overall. I am very excited that a studio like Lionsgate would allow a production like this to exist. And I love how it's not this cheesy Christian production like we're used to seeing, but it is something new. It is something that is gritty in a lot of ways and allows us to see the true humanity of Christianity and of people in general. We're not perfect. We're not polished. We're not these amazing people who never do anything wrong. Every single character in this film has a mistake. Every single character in this film messes up. And that, to me, is what really makes it a good film. It's not all of these amazing movements or things that happen. It's cool that we can see the history of that. But it's the fact that they added in the brokenness of people in general. From Greg Laurie to his wife to Chuck Smith and Lonnie. All of them are broken people, and yet God uses broken people in order to accomplish his mission. And I think that is really what's cool about this film, because it shows us that you don't have to be this super powerful spiritual person in order to accomplish these things. It's more about just following God and being obedient to him. As we always talk about on this channel, following Jesus is better, but it's not easy. And this film, I think, encapsulates that pretty well. So if you want to watch the movie this weekend, definitely go and do it. I recommend it for you. But if you want to stick around and hear a little bit about the spoilers of this movie, then stick around right here. Do you want to see more content like this or even better? Then the best way to support us is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is legitimately the best way that you can help to support us, and it really means a ton to us. This is my full-time job now, and so you would really be helping to support our family, putting groceries in our fridge, helping keep the lights on, and buying new equipment for this channel. Really, it means the world to us that you would support us, even for $5 a month. And that's your decision. $5, $10, $25 a month and you could help to support us to create more Christian content online. If you're interested, there's a ton of extra content on our Patreon, so go click that link in the description down below. Spoiler talk for this movie. I think that they did a really amazing job with all the scenes. In the beginning of the movie, we see as Greg is really struggling with searching for something. His mom's an alcoholic, he's really struggling with drugs, he's interested in this girl, and all of it is kind of culminating into a search for him. But then he sees Lonnie Frisbee, which is actually what happens. Greg said that he met Lonnie Frisbee at school as Lonnie was an evangelist that was able to talk in the high school. This is a really cool moment because it reminds us of how different America was in the 70s. We could never, ever have this happen today. But someone evangelizing in a high school would have been something that could have happened in the 70s. And that's exactly where Greg was actually saved. And the movie is a little bit different than real life. Obviously, there's different moments that kind of appear from here and there, and they change from spot to spot. But I think overall, the story is pretty clear, and Greg obviously has given his stamp of approval as everything moves forward. I think that is one of the key things about this film, is that they had Greg's voice throughout all of it, to share with them the realities of what the situation was like, how Lonnie acted, how Chuck acted, and how all of them worked together in order to make this a reality in this movement. It's very cool. And, and, and talking about Chuck and Lonnie real fast, I think that this relationship was very interesting. At first, we see as Chuck is very resistant to what Lonnie is asking him to do, to invite all of these hippies in and to give them a chance in his church and all of that. Now, people were upset. There were some people in Chuck's church that just straight up left because they couldn't handle what was going on. But there were some that embraced it and wanted to walk with these hippies as well in order to see what God had to do here. And of course, it was an amazing movement that ended up growing however we do see that a lot of these different things were a struggle for chuck he had a really hard time with people that were dealing with drugs or doing all of this different stuff because he was a staunch conservative he was someone who wasn't used to this life and so as he dove into it he became more and more comfortable you can actually see this in his wardrobe throughout the film he goes from wearing this tight suit and tie all the way to being way more comfortable and wearing casual 70s clothing 
it was a really cool change to see that throughout the film and how comfortable he got. But it didn't just stop there. He didn't just become this loving, everybody's welcome sort of person, we can do whatever we want, uh, the hippies rule sort of you know moment. We actually see as he gets to a moment of breaking with Lonnie, where he sees that Lonnie is going a bit too far. And there's a moment in which Lonnie is in a service and he feels the spirit talking to him. And then he speaks to this one woman who has an issue with drugs. And he says, you've been struggling with this for a long time, haven't you? And she says, yes. And so he prays over her and he helps to deliver her from this, you know, addiction of drugs. But then he goes on and he starts to pick out all of these other people in the crowd. And you can see as Chuck gets very, very uncomfortable. This is something that we see a lot in churches today as an overly charismatic person will go and they will begin to try to find out all of these miracle moments. And this becomes an issue because not every single time is it the spirit telling them that. While sometimes it might be, and yes, God does still heal, and yes, he does all of these things, sometimes it's not the case. And Chuck, I think, saw that within Lonnie. He saw that it wasn't just Lonnie listening to the spirit, but it was Lonnie becoming more and more selfish within himself. He wanted to be the guy. He wanted to be the leader. He wanted to be the miracle worker instead of allowing Jesus to do that, instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to work through him, he wanted to be the front man. And we see that throughout the film as Lonnie begins to descend into more of a selfish nature. Not only is he doing this in a ministry context, but he's also doing this in a marriage context as well. Now we know later on that Connie, who we see in the film as Lonnie's wife, actually they end up getting a divorce. And this plays out later in their lives as they move away from California. But Lonnie ends up descending into a lot of other things that we don't see in the film. Later on, after this film would be finished, after the time period of this film, we see that he actually basically walks away from God completely. Now, he still will preach from time to time at different services, and people will allow him to come and be a part of these different services. He's actually a part of the Vineyard Movement and making that in the 1980s. So, obviously, he's still a part of different things, but it came out eventually that he was still in the world. And doing a lot of the things of the world, including rumors of him being a homosexual and different stuff with drugs, obviously using and partying on the weekends. This was a known fact with Lonnie. So while we don't see this in the film in its entirety, we do see hints towards this as Connie and him begin to fight. And this is one of the catalysts that helps them to move away from California altogether. Also, there's a big tension between Chuck and Lonnie nearing the end of the film as well, where the two of them just can't work together anymore. Chuck doesn't really trust Lonnie because he thinks that Lonnie is all in it for himself. And of course, this leads Lonnie not to trust Chuck either. And so they end up splitting ways and Lonnie leaves with his wife, Connie, and they move out of California. So this is a really interesting movie overall. Like I said, I think the unpolished nature of it is what really makes it. And we see things like Greg Laurie's mom, who is a heavy alcoholic and married seven different times. We see as he has this trauma of people abandoning him, which I really resonate with. Having a similar childhood with a father who is a heavy alcoholic and drug user, I feel like I've struggled with abandonment my entire life. And so I definitely resonated with that part of the film in particular. To be honest, I wasn't super excited when I heard about this movie coming out. But to my surprise, it was actually a really great movie and we would probably rank it about an 8 or a 9 overall. I thought it was really well done, really well executed, really well written, and a great story overall. Of course, you can't be a story that God created himself back in the 70s. So I'd love to see more historical stories like this. I'd love to see more from the perspective of people that are still alive today that have gone through these different movements and revolutions. And yeah, it would be interesting to see more of that world in order to spark maybe something new for today. I am excited to see how this impacts the world today. Is this movie going to do well? Is it going to do poorly? Are people going to be excited? Are people going to care at all? I don't know. I don't have the answers to those questions, but I am excited to see the future of what this studio has and possibly what Lionsgate is willing to put out in the future as well. Definitely bless everybody who is a part of this production, and thank you for making another great piece of Christian media. It's what we need in the world today, so thank you so much. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.